YouTube. This is Matt, the prospecting geologist. Um, and today I wanted to talk with you guys about something that's commonly used in uh, geologic reports and geology papers and old mining reports and stuff that I believe the prospector should, should have a good idea about and uh, understand it and know about it so that they can uh, use it to their advantage when they're doing their research. Sorry for the cap. Uh, yeah, so what I'm talking about is uh, strike and dip. And I'm sure you guys have probably come across it and heard of it, um, but I wanted to go over it here in this YouTube video series. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. Um, so basically, strike and dip is generally talking about the inclination and the direction and inclination of uh, geologic features such as bedding planes, veins, uh, general overall formations. Um, and this really comes down into play for the prospector in regards to number one, when old reports or various mines are talking about the gold vein itself, they'll give you a lot of times a strike and dip of it. Uh, and then the other place where it comes into play is the, a lot of times the overriding formation that those uh, gold mines and gold veins are in. Um, so we'll start with just the basics of strike and dip here though. Um, so if we look at this, with this top plane here, this is your map view, and this is a side cutaway view, like if you were looking at a side view of the Earth cut in half. Uh, so the strike is your generally a compass direction type number, generally represented as something like north, this would be kind of like north 30 degrees east. So if here's north, 30 degrees east would be something like this. So it'd be north 30 degrees east. So that's describing the direction or trend that this, we'll say, vein is running in. Now the second number that's given, the dip, is describing the downward plunging angle of that formation. So with this one here, we are looking at a vein with a dip of 45 degrees. And since the trend is northeast, the dip is always 90 degrees to the strike. So the dip has to be to the southeast. Um, so this plane or this vein is trending north 45 or north 35 degrees east and dipping about 45 degrees to the southeast. Um, and that's the general layman's terms that you'll see. And a lot of times in, in the geologic reports or papers, you will see it talk about the dip will be, or the striking dip will be given north 35 degrees east, 45 degrees southeast. Um, there are variations on that depending on the type of compass and everything that you're using, but we'll just stick with that quadrant one where it's broken into, the compass is broken into quadrants. Okay, so the other way that you will generally see strike and dip displayed would be on a geologic map, where they're, they're not going to generally give you a written out north 35 degrees east, 45 degrees southeast on a geologic map. Generally, they're going to give you symbols that's going to look like this. It's going to be a, incline, or a line with a tick coming off of it. The line does, is not going to have a number, but that represents the strike of it. And so it will be, so this is still representing about a north 35 degree east strike. But this line can be changed and be moved around at different compass points to represent what the strike is on that map. The tick coming off of it is once again at 90 degrees and represents the dip, and it generally will be given with a number coming off of it. So with this strike and dip symbol on a geologic map, you're looking at 
the dip of 45 degrees, just like what we've been doing here. Um, so that's the general basics of your strike and dip uh, inclinations and uh, stuff that you'll see in geologic reports and on geologic maps. So now we're going to get into the more practical uses of it for a prospector that, I mean, they're generally not going to talk about a lot of times in those geologic reports and maps. But these are then the interpretations and other uh, ways that you can use this type of information to your advantage when you're out in the field prospecting. Okay, so now that we've gone over the basics of strike and dip, um, and, and generally the formats you're going to see them in in papers and maps, I just want to give you some examples of what they're going to be looking like on maps and what you're going to be wading through, because as you can see on the screen here, geologic maps can be an in incredibly complicated, and there's a ton of information packed onto a geologic map. Um, but in here, if you look close enough, you can see, like right here, and right here, there's strike and dip symbols. And you see the line, the tick coming off of the 13, so that one's striking nearly straight north, and it's dipping 13 degrees to the west, so it's a fairly shallow dip. It's only dipping, like, that below horizontal, so it's a pretty uh, shallowly dipping bed. Um... But you can see that they're all over here. But you got to be able to sort through this information, whereas as you come over into some of these other terrains, there's this whole bunch of other symbols that look like strike and dip, but are generally more so uh, not the strike and dip of bedding planes and of uh, veins, but of foliations within the rock itself. So like... Uh, Lydia, mm, uh, Sorry, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain what foliations are. Um, but it's kind of eluding me. But generally, these types are not going to be as useful to you because they're not representing the strike and dip. Another thing, well, it's generally not shown on maps, uh, but faults will also generally have a strike and dip. And it can be useful to know that as well. Um, so yeah, this is what you're going to be kind of running into when you're looking on geologic maps and stuff and the type of information you have to sort through. Uh, but it is doable, but it, it takes some practice and getting used to, to to get a good understanding and figure out what's going on in these maps. And believe me, it's even sometimes difficult to figure out for a geologist what the hell's going on in some of these maps. So, okay, we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so now for the meat and potato part of this for you, the gold prospector, not since you're not a geologist, you want to know, okay, how is, how is this information useful to me? So I know many of you use the mineral resource data system or other types of maps that will give you point locations for gold mines, such as what you see on the screen here. Um, and that's, it's, it's well and good to know that. Um, it helps you with then determining, okay, I can get permission for this and try and get in here to go prospecting. But it's, it's not a ton of information. You need to usually do more research, but some people do, some people don't. Um, but I highly recommend that you do because, okay, so now we, we have this gold mine here that you found on a map. But what, do we know which way it's trending? The, the actual vein that they are mining. If you can find that information, there's multiple ways to find it. One would be is if it's on a geologic map, a lot of times, in some cases, the, and this, this would, you would learn this from research as well. In some cases, the veins of a gold mine are going to also generally be on the same strike and dip of the surrounding formation. So if you can find that the the veins of the gold mines in the area were generally running with the strike and dip of the country rock or the bedrock, then you can kind of uh, make an educated guess that for this one it's going to be doing the same thing. So you find the strike and dip of the surrounding bedrock and that gives you that. There are cases where gold veins do not go with the strike and dip of the bedrock though, so you got to be careful with that. Um, 
but in this in this part here we're going to use another source to help us with determining which way the uh, trend of this gold vein is going. Um, let's say yeah you're coming here and you this is the gold mine and you can get close to it to go prospect when you're going to get into this this stream over here and you're like it's only a couple couple hundred yards from the gold mine but you didn't you didn't do more research and you didn't find out which way this strike and dip is going and you dig over here and you don't find anything and you get skunked well if you, if you dig a little deeper and put some more time in you may be able to find out which way this trend is going and that this stream does not cut that vein trend and therefore over here there's going to be very little gold whereas a stream such as these little ones here are going to be very rich. But let's turn on these LiDAR and it's, I mean, it's crazy how much these show you. So bam, now you got your LiDAR exposed and you can see that, well, for one, this little point that they say is a gold mine, if you look, it's actually, there's a lot, there's a lot more there than just that little point. But from this, you can also see then that, okay, well, yeah, there wasn't much mining going on over here. Though it's still maybe worth to check that. But for your first trip out into the field, for, if you have permission for this area, I would be trying to dig, I would be trying to dig like this here, right where this vein trend is crossing that little tiny stream or this little rivulet here. Because you can see from the old timers' diggings the direction that this vein trend is running. I mean, you can just you can see their open pits and trenches in this nice linear straight fashion, and that is a dead giveaway that that is the the strike of it. It's generally not going to tell you the dip as well, but you can get that then from the geologic papers and everything. But a lot of times, as a prospector, we are more interested in the strike. Um, and from this here, you can see, yeah, this is definitely, there was a lot of mining going on here back in the day. And hey, this might be a really good spot to go check out. Uh, but yeah, so then the, you dig in these spots, you may come out really good. Uh, this one over here, maybe not so much because it's just not, it's not on that same trend. This, these little streams, I mean, it looks like it's mainly going to be shedding down to this south and not to that just the way it's running across that ridge and stuff so this would be the primary areas you want to go um, and so through research and finding the strike and dip of the vein or the country rock that's in and then also if, if you can get access to lidar it can that can amazingly help too and really show you what's more going on because it looks like there's other small stuff going on down here that it's not marked at all on the MRDS system. I mean you can find lost gold mines that just aren't simply documented with LIDAR. Um, it's an incredible tool. So I hope this little presentation on uh, strike and dip for the gold prospector helps you guys and gets you on to some fantastic gold in the future. Um, this is going to lay the foundations for future videos and blog posts and other prospecting methods that are dealing with uh, knowing and understanding strike and dip and how it can lead you to new prospects and new areas that may not have been mined for gold in the past but may still have good gold and do, I know what... Uh, Bill Southern Nugget Shooter and other ones talk about as uh, uh, fringe hunting, hunting around the known areas of gold and finding extensions of them and everything. Um, so with that, yeah, if, if you enjoyed this video and you found it informative, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, for LiDAR information in the future, there will be a website that I'm currently working on coming out soon where... Uh, LiDAR, Google Earth, LiDAR overlays like you see in the screen right now will be available for sale to you, the prospector, for GPAA claims and a number of other ones, as well as if you want ones for custom areas that are like your private spots. 
uh, that would be custom made just for you with everything, all your information kept confidential and it only going to you, of course. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please uh, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, smash that bell button so you get updates whenever I post new videos. And that'll be it for today. See ya.